Calgary's only classic rock. It's day number two of the Caring for Kids Radiothon. My name is Tim Morgan, and uh, I'm, I'm here in the afternoon through until 7 o'clock tonight. Uh, I was here yesterday, and today and tomorrow, normally I sit at a desk and, and send uh, send those middle management emails. But uh, the program director for Q107 has to... Uh, has to do what's best for the hospital, and I couldn't be more honored and couldn't be more pleased to be uh, here. Uh, this next story we want to tell you about, we want to introduce you to a, to the, to a, a family, uh, Bilal and Sahir, and their 10-year-old son, uh, Azad, are here at the table with us. And this is a story uh, for anyone that's ever had to pick up their kids, anyone that has um, that, that have uh, active kids, uh, I, I think this is a story that might resonate with you. Guys, thanks for uh, spending some time with us today. Thanks for uh, calling us. Thank you. So, uh, September 27th is the date when everything changed. We've heard this before uh, over the last couple of days where uh, life changes in an instant. Um, September 27th changed your life. The doorbell rang at your house, and uh, and what happened next? Um, there was a, a young lady at the door, and um, actually I was upstairs, and um, my daughter called me downstairs. She's like, there's somebody at the door. So I ran downstairs, and um, I had noticed that um, Aza hadn't come home um, from school yet, and usually that was a time that he was usually home. So, uh, anyways, I go downstairs, and um, there's this lady, and she's like, um, "Your son, he's been hit by a car." And um, I mean, I don't know what I thought at that time. I just ran out. I was barefoot. I I ran out to um, just uh, like two, three houses up from where we live. And uh, as I'm running up the street, um, I'm thinking, okay, you know, he's. He's probably got, you know, a broken leg or, you know, like a broken arm or something. And I'm, and I'm expecting him to be, you know, sitting up or standing. But um, when I got there, I was um, just shocked um, as to what I saw because um, uh, all the injuries that he had, I didn't, I didn't recognize him. At first, I was like, you know, he's not my son because all of his injuries were to his face. And um, he just looked so different. And there's so much blood loss and... Um, Obviously, I, I lost it, and um, there was a very nice lady there, and she actually kind of um, pulled you know me aside and be like, you know, you have to calm down because he was still conscious. He was um, surprisingly he was still he was looking at me, and so she was like, you know, this is going to freak him out even more. So you need to tell him that you know he's going to be okay. So I'm like, you know, but at that time I didn't believe that because looking at him, I was like. You know, there's no way that he's gonna survive this because it was just a horrible, horrible scene. And um, just from there, you know, I told them, okay, you know, Aza, just just hang tight, and you know, we're going to the hospital, and you know, you're gonna be okay. And then we hopped in the ambulance and we got there. I, in the meantime, I I called my husband. Well, actually, Kelly was uh, she was somebody at the scene. She had called my husband and. You know, I couldn't talk to him. I just said, I was just crying and screaming. And, you know, it was like, you know, Aza has been hit by a car and you have to go straight to the hospital. So you're, you're, uh, and, and I don't know if there's an actual medical term for this, but uh, maternally, your your gut is telling you that this is not going to end well for your no, son. Yeah, exactly. And that, for, to, to have that thought just must be <laughs> incomprehensible. Exactly. Like I, you know, you, you always hear about things like this, but you never think it could happen to you. So you never, you're never really prepared, you know, for anything like this. So, you know, when I saw him and, and, and that lady was like, you know, you have to tell him, you have to start screaming, you have to stop crying. And I'm like, you know, I, I don't know where, where do I find that strength? You know, it's, it's so, it's, it was so hard. And just when we got to the hospital, you know, I was at that time I was alone and um, he, my husband hadn't come yet. So um, just sitting in the waiting room, um, there was a really nice lady there who, in ICU. She was, you know, comforting me and just talking to me, you know, getting me water and stuff. And so, uh, you know, so he came after a while. Blal came and then um, there's a nurse that came in and said, you know, your son's um, heart has stopped and we're trying to revive him. So, um, you know, we're doing the best that we can. And But he's losing a lot of blood. So it's just um, the next half an hour is very critical so um i mean at that time i couldn't even comprehend what she was saying i mean it was like it was just like a nightmare like it's you know you're wanting to wake up but you you know that this is happening and you have to deal with it mm-hmm. it's like a surreal world so um 
Anyways, uh, the, the doctor comes in a little while later. He's like, you know, we, we managed to revive him. But he's, um, you know, I remember the doctor's words exactly. He's like, your son is very, very ill. And um, he started this thing, all the injuries he had. Um, he, every bone in his, in his face was broken. Um, he had a bra- brain hemorrhage. Um, at that time, they thought his arm was broken, his leg was broken. He had broken ribs. Um, and he was just bleeding. It was just... Um, like they couldn't figure out where he was bleeding from, and um, they had to obviously take him into emergency surgery right away and uh, try to find out where he was bleeding from. And kind of like at that time, I'm just like, where do you start from? Because it's like you don't know what's going on inside because obviously he's bleeding, but it's like where is he bleeding from? So they had to kind of determine that first, and then you know take him into surgery. Mm-hmm. And um, and and Doctor Harrop was, uh, have I got the name right, yes, Dr. Dr. Harris? Yes, Dr. Harris. Yes. W- was uh, someone that played a big role in, in uh, these next steps? Yes, yes. He actually um, performed um, the, the surgeries. And, um, you know, when he came to us, um, the, the first time we met him, you know, he's like, you know, this is a, a very uh, a serious case. You know, I've, he's like, I'm nev- I've never seen... Um, uh, so much um, damage in the face. Like he's like all the bones are broken. Are you? I mean, are you just numb at this point? Can you even? Yeah. It's, process. It's you know so the information. That's, yeah, exactly. You know, I, I mean, a doctor coming to you and, and saying something like, "I've never seen this many injuries in one child," and yes. to put that into context, where that one child is. Yeah, it's, it's is, our is yours. Yeah, is, this, yeah. yeah one of the things is that is, it's uh, like Dr. Harrop and his team and. And there are other doctors as well. So there's not just one thing that we were worried about. It's like the list of the things was just keep going on. And then I remember Dr. Simon Parsons sitting with me and then going with the, on a list of things that can go wrong. And, and, and there were so many things in it that, that can go wrong. And we were just thinking, like, okay, when he's going to stop? Because he's keep going and his ribs are broken. His, this, you know, his face has several fractures. You know, his abdominal doesn't look good. You know, and he's, he's probably have a ruptured spleen. So we just keep thinking, you know, um, like how that much uh, damage can happen, right. you know, and how they're going to fix it. I mean, that that point, I, I know we, we both, me and my wife, we don't know, like, what's going to happen. And then they were telling us, like, next few, you know, hours or days, even very, very critical for him. So when when you got the news that Azad had been hit by a, a, a car and was on his bicycle, were, were you at work? I'm at work, actually. I was about to leave uh, that day. Uh, I, I, normally I leave at six uh, from work, but six ish. But that day you know, uh, I was uh, planning to leave early, and um, I got the phone call from that lady, you know, Kelly. Uh, she called me, and, and um, I, I picked up the phone, and uh, when I heard, you know, her, her voice, and she said, uh, do, "Do you have a son?" And um, I, I, I had a. You know, there's a very weird thing that feel, uh, before the accident, you know, a day or a couple of days before that, I had some really strong feeling that uh, AZ is going to be gonna hit by a car. And it was very strong. It was not like he, he, something is going to happen mm-hmm. to AZ. It's like it's, he was taking the bus to school, and he was taking bus to school before that, too. But, it's, you know, he stopped going to that school and then he's going to the clo- a school that's close by. Mm-hmm. But when um, I remember that, when the, and I think it was just like a couple of weeks. Then when he started going back to school, it's because it's September. The first day I was there with him, and when they were handing me the uh, the bus route and everything, I was thinking, you know what, I should this time drop him off and pick him up again. And then all of a sudden, I just have this strong feeling that he's going to hit by a car, and I'm thinking that, oh, this, I'm overreacting. I came home that day. Next day, I, you know, when I go to work, it goes to the school about the same time. And um, I normally, you know, uh, kiss him goodbye, and, you know, uh, uh, sometimes, you know, he, you know, he gives, me, gives me a hug, and I, mm-hmm. I, you know, send him to school. And I, again, next day, I had the same feeling that he's going to hit by a car. And I was thinking, about well, I should tell my wife that about that. But I think she's going to think I'm overreacting. So when that phone call came, within a split second, milliseconds, I, I kind of, in the back of my head, I knew what happened. I didn't know the, I didn't know the extent of this accident, but I knew. But then the Callie told me that, you know, she, he, your, your son is by a car. And I, the first thing I asked her, I said, how bad is it? And she said, really bad. It's really bad. So I said, well, okay, and said, you have to talk to your wife. So I talked to my wife, but she couldn't talk. Yeah. She was just screaming, and I, I left right away with my brother, and we took a cab, and we came to the hospital within, like, 15, 20 minutes, and um, and then when I came in, I saw all these people working on my son, 
and then there were like 10, 12 people, you know, then different doctors and nurses, and I saw the EMS and police out there. So when I walked into the room, uh, my wife was, you know, not in a good uh, position, so I started talking to her, and, and then the nurse came and gave us the, the worst news of our life, that her is a st- heart stop. Uh, I, I didn't know what to, what to, at that point, how to process all this. Within like 45 minutes of me leaving the office and coming here, everything changed all mm-hmm. of a sudden. When Azad was in ICU, uh, were you able to say anything to him? Yeah, you know, doctor was telling us that, you know, you can talk to him, he's just listening. And, you know, at that point, um, we didn't know if he's, if he's going to be he's listening. But, you know, later on, he told us things that, you know, we, we were <laughs> wondering, how do you you know know all this and he said oh you know i know um and um yeah he said well you know and then i was i was just talking to him i and you know we have a daughter 12 years daughter and she's special need and uh, i normally used to tell him that you know you're the second man of the house so mm-hmm. after me you are the person who's going to be taking care of your sister because she's she's special needs, she cannot walk or talk and he always tell me, okay, I, 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 oh, okay, I am the, I'm the second man of us. Yeah, you are. And that's what I was telling, I was uh, trying to tell him that when he was, he was kind of in that situation, that it, he promised me that he will take care of his sister. And I said, you, you, you should remember your promise, and you need to come out of this hospital uh, and walking with me. And it, at that point, it seemed like a, a very, very, very uh, tough task. Mm-hmm. But um, I think you know, with all the doctors and help and support that we have it's it's gonna it happen do you guys uh, re- relive the moments of that day i mean do you think back to that day y- yeah i think it changes our life it changed the you know our life from up you know everything you know the way we th- see things and the way we see family especially you know this facility is not new for us we have a special need daughter mm-hmm. so we've been coming here for the last 12 years the amazing staff over here everybody from I would say from the parking guy over there to anybody who supports you know, uh, the family and the, and, the, and the kids are amazingly good, very caring. So here, what do you think about when you think of that morning? Um, well, you know, it's very close to our house, so it's like, you know, every other morning when I drive by, I can, you know, visualize myself running to the scene and just, um, you know, it, it's upsetting, but obviously, you know, I just... Knowing the fact that he's okay and he's doing, you know, better every day, it's um, it, it helps us to um, forget those that moment and just kind of uh, think about, you know, all his healing and everything like that. At any point, were you able to have a a, a conversation with him uh, in those early hours? And I, I know that you had said that uh, he, the doctors had told you he can hear a few things, but was he responsive in any way? The first few days, uh, I, he. I don't remember. He, just, uh, he wasn't. They he actually wasn't. had him on um, lots of medication okay. just to have him sleep because sure. they didn't know if he had brain damage. They didn't know if his um, spine was injured. So they didn't want him moving. So obviously if we were to talk to him, mm-hmm. he'd probably you know, try to get up yeah. because his eyes were swollen shut. And um, obviously he couldn't talk because his, um, his jaw and everything inside was broken. So. Yeah. So w- once the doctors were able to get some of their own questions answered about about uh, the the condition that Azad was in, how did they go about fixing your son? Oh well, there was an initial surgery that was the main surgery was to save his life, and um, that happened that night. And um, you know they're like, you know, we have to go in and operate right away just to kind of see where he's bleeding from because it was all in the face. So um, they went in, and um, obviously the, the doctors were like, um, you know, he's losing blood as fast as we're giving him blood. It's, it's coming out the same way, the same speed. So it, the challenge was just to get him not to lose more blood, but, you know, that kept happening. And um, there was um, one incident that we were told about that his um, palate, just the roof of his mouth, was um, just shattered. It was just, like, cut open. And... Um, that was where uh, there was a lot of veins there, and that's where he was bleeding from. So there was a resident doctor, um, uh, Jennifer Matthews, and she actually, uh, even Dr. Harrop was like, you know, she actually, she, she saved his life because she held his palate up for half an hour with her hand, and that caused him, you know, that caused the bleeding to stop or, you know, slow down, you know, drastically. So... I mean, she she saved him, you know, because, you know, if she hadn't done that, you know, I, I don't mm-hmm. know if he'd be sitting here today. 
Yeah, that's such an incredible story. And, uh, I mean, are, are, can can words even begin to describe what what the team of doctors and what this place means to you? I mean, can, can you even put yeah, it into any um, type of context? No, it's just like, you know, like everyone, like every other parent has said here, it's, you know, thank you. It, it doesn't seem like it's enough. Like, there are really no words to describe, you know, how we feel, like... You know, like uh, my husband said, our daughter, she's 12. She has cerebral palsy. And, you know, we've been coming here for with her for 12 years now. And um, so we're very, very familiar with the hospital and different, you know, departments and stuff. Obviously, this was a very different situation. So, I mean, everyone here is just great. They just, you know, it's, it's different. You know, obviously, they're treating your child. But it's like you're kind of like a patient yourself because, obviously, you need help dealing with the situation, dealing with your child's injuries or, you know, surgeries or whatnot. So it's really, um, they just, you know, I think I like hugged every nurse in ICU just because, you know, they, they, they just, you know, have this way of, you know, comforting you and it it just, um, it just, it makes it, it makes a world of a difference. I I think when, you know, starting from ICU, all the nurses, doctors, you know, doctor, Simon Parson and nurses over there, especially my couple of nurses are my, my, my son's favorite, uh, um, um, Troy and um, Holly. Uh, and actually, I'm going to tell you one thing that he used to, the first time he, he was in kind of awake and he asked for a paper. We couldn't see at that point well because he was very swollen and everything and he couldn't talk as his mouth was all shut with wires and he asked for a paper and he said, well, I need a paper. It's something to write. And we were very excited. Okay, he's going to write something. And the first thing he wrote after that, it was, where's Holly? <laughs> yeah, we're, so we're expecting something profound, you know, but that's what it is. And after that, you know, we went to the, uh, you know, Unit 4, an amazing staff at Unit 4. Uh, you know, everybody from Lissette uh, to Dr. I mean, even Dr. All the Dr. Dr. Herb, Dr. Steve Lep- Le- Lepichansky, and um, every other nurse and you know, at, at that unit floor, amazingly good. Not just they took care of Aza, they took care of us as well. Mm-hmm. And actually, I felt like we needed really help too, actually, at that point. And they took care of us. And we had so many visitors came here, like I think hundreds of visitors. Because like, wow. we have a huge community mm-hmm. and we have a, hu- like, a lot of family, friends, and a lot of people that we didn't even know they came and and they showed up and then just hundreds of people they were here that these hallways were full the waiting rooms were full and we were thinking okay what the staff is going to say they but they never said anything i mean they never said anything like you know it's a visiting hours or where like you know and then uh, all the therapists uh, you know also i would like to say you know they helped really a lot with our kids you know uh, and um, every every therapist and back uh, lucy lisa how is AZ, how is AZ doing now I mean, it's great. Like, I, I, he's sitting across from me, and he looks like he's doing great. He, he's, uh, he's, he's, uh, he's doing really good. He's, yeah. uh, he's a very energetic guy. Yeah. You know, that's, I think, one of the things that he's going to push him, actually. Right. Um, but other than that, he can probably tell you how he's doing. <laughs> you look like you're getting comfortable with the microphone and headphones, Aza. <laughs> <laughs> do, uh, do, you, do you remember uh, a lot from uh, being in this hospital? Uh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, and and y- y- when you come in now, do you uh, do you get uh, do you get an opportunity to say hello and say thank you to the nurses and doctors? Uh, well, usually the um, the fourth floor usually they had uh, some. Uh, it was closed down, so we didn't uh, <laughs> say thank you because <laughs> we couldn't go to the fourth floor because I don't know what happened, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what do you? What's your favorite part of the hospital, Aizen? Ice cream for breakfast. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic! And uh, you know, I, I, it must be difficult to come back and, and retell because you're reliving and thinking about it. But you know, I mean, it's quarter to four on a weekday afternoon, and I know that there are parents who are on their way to pick up kids that are listening to your yeah. story. And I, I, I hope that it resonates with them uh, how life can change in an instant, and and why this hospital is so, so important. important that's that's truly a really good um, uh, um, it's true that you know how this uh, this place is so important for the kids and for our, our families and and everybody who lives here we are so fortunate that we we live in a city that has this facility like this 
and uh, um, it's a miracle that is at the sitting over here mm-hmm. and in and after God and all the prayers I think it's the hospital who saved his life yeah and all the supporting staff everybody mm-hmm. everybody from top to bottom uh, you know it was par- uh, participated in in somehow in this yeah. recovery Azad, we'll, we'll let you have the last word here. Uh, maybe you you could tell people that are listening right now. Azad, could you tell people why they should uh, why they should become miracle makers and why they should give money? Well, <laughs> to give money? Yeah, <laughs> not to you. Not to you. No, not to. <laughs> no, to help the hospital. To help the hospital and the kids like you. Uh, so you could help them because there's some sick people and. Um, that needs uh, people's help, mm-hmm. and um, you could give money to um, people in the hospital because ice cream for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we could have ice cream for breakfast. There we go. <laughs> and play video games. Scare. Bilal, thank you so much. Thanks, Aza, thank you. Thanks, Thanks guys. Man. Thank you. Four zero three eight zero two twenty seven hundred. It's uh, 344, and it's the Enbridge Power Hour on Q107's Caring for Kids Radiothon, and it continues with the Rolling Stones. You're listening to the Caring for Kids Radiothon for the Alberta Children's Hospital on Q107. Show your support at 403-802-2700 or toll-free 1-877-715-KIDS. We're in the middle of a special power hour.